Hi, this is Kevin, and welcome to the Test Context property on the Test Path. So let's take a look at the Test Context property, and as the name implies, what it allows you to do is get the context of a given instance of a run of a test. And of course it's useful just to know things about a test as it runs, but it also allows us to do output into our test results. So we can call line, and that will show up in the results. So here you see an example of using the test context property to print out various things about a given test execution and you can use that as you build your results. So before we look at that output, let's take a look at how we build this property test context. Here you see the test context property which is going to return a test context object and then the code behind that which allows the system to communicate with your test. So if you have a property called test context that returns a test context, the test framework will automatically populate that with the correct code. You'll also note that I do have a backing field of type test context. Now strictly speaking we don't need this. If you were to do an auto implemented property you, you could get exactly the same results. In other words you could actually comment this out and change this to an auto implemented property like so and you'd actually get the same results. But I tend to avoid auto implemented properties unless there's a good justification for using them so I would suggest you go ahead and spell it out as I've done here. So when we run the test and then look at the results, we see in the output that we have a link that allows us to open additional output for this result. So we'll click on that and there you see in the standard output test context messages and then that was the first message that we printed out and then the rest of this is information about the individual instance of the running test. You may have also noticed that the results show up in a box labeled standard output. And it turns out that we can in fact use console.writeline to get information into this test result. But it does have an interesting twist. Let's take a look at adding a line like that. So at the bottom of our test method we will add the line and of course if you were doing a lot of console.write lines you'd probably want to make a using directive for system. But in this case I only have one line and so I'll go with this. So now we'll run our test and take a look at the results and interestingly you'll notice that the console.write line output actually appears above the test context messages output inside of the standard output box. So that's just one thing to be aware of as you choose an output approach in a test method. And that was the test context property on the test path. Thanks for watching.